First of all, for you for I to the L and I power, first of all, we need to have the polar form of I is right here. The distance from here to here is 1, and the angle from here to here is equal to pi over 2. And now we can write I in terms of our yeah, theta form. So this right here becomes R is 1, which we just have E and then I pi over 2, right? And then we raise this to the ln I, which is the same thing, E to the I pi over 2 right here. And now you see this and that will cancel. So we actually just get E to the I pi over 2 raised to the I pi over 2 power. And now, of course, we can just multiply the powers together. So we get E and then I times I is of course I squared and then pi of 2 times pi of 2 we get pi squared over 4 and of course I squared is equal to negative 1 so on all we end up with e to the negative pi squared over 4 and in fact this is real very cool huh that's it bye Okay, as well now, when we have log base b of a, this right here is unfortunately not always the same as log base a of b. But let me show you guys a log property that actually does a similar favor. So have a look. When we have a to the log base b of c, in fact, we can switch a and c, and that's actually legit. So let me show you guys how. First off, look at a as c to the log base c of a, and you see c and log base c will cancel. So this is still a, right? And then we can take this raised to the log base b of c power, and now we have a power to the power situation, so we can multiply the powers together. So this becomes c to the log base c of a times log base b of c and you see we have this in front of the log so we can put this right here to become a power so we get c to the log base b and this is c raised to the log base c of a power and you see what this and that will cancel in the end we get c to the log base b of a i told you this works that's it are you sure yeah I heard that you want to find the derivative inverse inch x, so let me show you. First of all, we're going to leave y equal to inverse inch of x, and then we'll take the original sinh on both sides. So this way we get sinh of y that's equal to just x, and this way we can do implicit differentiation. So let's go ahead and put down d dx right here, and the derivative of sinh is equal to cos, you remove that, so we have cos of y right here, but don't forget, we have to use the chain rule, so multiply by the derivative y with respect to x, which is going to be dy dx, and the derivative of x is just equal to 1, and now we can divide this guy on both sides, so we get dy dx is equal to just 1 over cos of y, and now we have to figure out what's cos of y in terms of x. Well, look at this, and we have to know the identity. And the identity is that we have cos square of y minus sin square of y. That's equal to 1. And you see, this is just equal to x, right? And then let's move this to the other side and then take the square root on both sides and just the positive square root because cos is always positive. So in the end, we get this is equal to 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared. And then this right here is it. Nobody knew how to solve this question during my live stream, so have a look. We want a n and nobody is equal to 0 for o n, but we want the infinite series of a n is equal to 0. How can we do that? Give you 5 seconds, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So here we go. We can actually use the infinite power series for this. Well, I can use sine for it. You can use cosine if you would like, but let's use sine. Sine is equal to the series as n goes from 0 to infinity. It's alternating, and we have to have the odd factorials, and then it's x to the odd powers. And this right here is good for all x. And sine of what is equal to 0? Sine of pi is equal to 0. So have a look. This right here is just sine of pi. And then this right here is just going to be the series as n goes from 0 to infinity. And we have negative 1 raised to the nth power over 2n plus 1. And then factorial that. And then here, x is pi. So we have pi raised to the 2n plus 1 power. Guess what? This guy has to be equal to 0 because sine of pi is equal to 0. So this right here is the answer. And here is the a n. And we are done. Can we read this off this cubic equation? Yes! Otherwise, how can I make this video, right? So first, we're going to move this guy to the other side. So here we have x plus third power equals positive three x squared plus three x and then plus one. And then what we'll do next is just go ahead and add x to the third power on both sides. And you will see why on the left hand side, we'll get what? Two x to the third power. And on the right hand side, check this out. We have x to the third power plus three x squared plus three x plus one. And that is exactly parentheses x plus one to the third power. Very nice. And then we can just then take the cube root on both sides. And this is going to give us the only real answer. And you'll see on the left hand side, we get the cube root of 2 times x. And on the right hand side, we get just x plus 1. And move the x to the other side and then factor out the x. So we get the cube root of 2 minus 1 and then the x right here. And this is equal to 1. Finally, divide this guy on the other side. So we get x is equal to 1 over cube root of 2 minus 1. Beautifully done. That's just it. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the easiest way to find the principal square root of i. First, we are going to try this as a nested square root, and we still real.
power is zero, and we have to look at i as two times one half i, but i is the same as square root of negative one. Now we have to bring the one half inside of the square root, and we see this becomes the square root of zero plus two, and one half is the same as square root of one over four. So this right here becomes the square root of negative one over four. Now we have to open two square roots with the plus in between, and think about two numbers. They add up to be zero. They multiply to be negative one over four. The correct combination is one over two and negative one over two. Now we can rewrite this as one over square root of two, and this is the same as one over square root of two. Ah, and we have all those. Now we do not have to rationalize the denominator, and this is it.